Hey everybody, it's Galmadex, and welcome back to another Premier Remix Draft Artifacts. I think that's the name. I think I got it all right. But anyways, let's start with our pack one, pick one here. We got lots of sweet options as always. Probably going to start with Reverse Engineer. I think every deck in this format can really easily just poop out a bunch of artifacts everywhere. So this can just be two mana, draw three, which is super absurd. Tamiyo's Journal is also really good at winning a long game, but there's a lot of really powerful aggressive archetypes in this format, like Green White and Rakdos and Blue Red. So I'm a little sketched out about something that grinds out a bunch of value over time slowly. Not super excited about that. I think Reverse Engineer is pretty reasonable as super cheap card draw, or Candy Grapple for great removal, or Thraben Inspector for a nice little two for one. Pretty excellent opening pack though, but let's start with Reverse Engineer here. Pick number two. Boros Aggro is also fantastic with cards like Arcbound Shikari, putting a counter on all of your uh, artifact creatures. There's no blue follow up here, which is kind of awkward because the strongest cards are all two colored cards captured by Legax, insane for Selesnya Aggro, Greta, insane for the green black food deck and Shikari Insane for the Boros Modular deck. Kind of just have to take one of these because they're just so strong compared to everything else in the pack. I think I'm going to take the Captured by Legax. I think this card is ridiculous. You're shutting off a blocker and putting two plus one plus one counters on your board. Super, super stupid for Slesnia Aggro. Pick three, Scrapwork Cohort can fit into any deck. It's better in white decks, but you can splash in its unearth pretty easily. And it's just a great way to get a wide board state. Trail of Crumbs, insane card draw for the food deck. Bake into a pie, great removal for any black deck. These are my favorites here, but Ornithopter can also fit in anything fine. Kind of want to see if we can get in the Selesnya deck here off this cohort. Pick number four, yeah, Oltec Cloud Guard. Scrapwork Cohort's flying cousin. You actually have to play white for this card. But in exchange, you get a 3-2 flyer instead of a 3-1 on the ground. Can't unearth this one, but a 3-2 flyer that comes with a 1-1 is pretty absurd. Pick number 5. Hollow Scavenger is excellent in the Golgari deck and still fine in green-white. I don't actually think Glorifier is that good. You really need the expendable artifacts for this card. Yeah, I would just rather take Hollow Scavenger here than Glorifier of Suffering. Pick six, Selesnya Dual Land. Bone Splitter is nice in most decks as well. Anything with token production or flyers can make great use of Bone Splitter. We've got a little bit of that already. But I'm going to take the perfectly on color fixing for now. Another Hollow Scavenger over Disenchant. Metallic Rebuke's busted in this format as well. One mana counter something unless they pay three. Like, if you can improvise for it, which most blue decks can, it's very silly. just feel like we're doing a pretty good job being real focused on this Lesnia game plan here, so I'm going to stick to it. Just aggro nonsense. On the job is a fine finisher. I don't think I need a third Hollow Scavenger this early, so I'll grab a one of on the job. Wanderer Strike, this is a exile removal spell. Costs a lot of mana, but it does put another plus one plus one counter on all your creatures with plus one plus one counters on them. That proliferate mechanic playing pretty well in the Selesnya archetype. As long as we can find the support cards like Captured by Legax. Pick 10. Disenchant does play well in the set, but Iron Apprentice plays well in the archetype. Mm, I'll take the Disenchant here. All right, pack number two, pick one. We have a Hangerback Walker. 
probably the pick for an archetype that already has plus and plus one counter synergies and it's just really flexible on the mana curve play it anywhere when it dies you poop out a million thopters we'll take the hanger back walker for sure love to wheel servant of the scale woodland champion uh, or scrap work cohort being the best cards woodland champion is uh gonna get plus one plus one counter whenever we make a food or a gnome, or a soldier, or a thopter. So that's probably the best of them. Oh, we get past Torrential Gear Hulk? I'm only three cards deep into green. And we got a really late Eye of Malkator. This card is just broken. You have to have instants in your deck. That's the one prerequisite, but... Get a 5-6 on the board and recast an instant from Grave. Oh, and it's an absolute turning point decision here, too, where it's in the same pack as Captured by Legax copy, too. Oh, I do think blue felt a little more open than green. And Gear Hulk's a massive reason to be in blue versus Captured by Legax just being a big reason to be in Celestia. Gear Hulk it is. Goodbye, green deck. Now we get a Metallic Rebuke to go with the Gear Hulk. Pretty beautiful. And just as a good counter spell in the first place. On the job is not going to be good this color pair. We're not going to have a super wide board most likely. Hard Evidence is going to be great. So make a crab and draw a card off the clue. So it just soaks up a lot of damage in the early game, gives us a clue to improvise with in the early game that we can also crack to draw a card later. Hard Evidence just plays a lot better than it looks, and I'm happy to take it here. Pick five? Hey, Chrome Courier is awesome. If you've got enough artifacts in your deck, I actually don't even need that many, because this draws you a card no matter what. It just gains you the life if you manage to draw an artifact. Yeah, Chrome Courier is just a great enter effect. A great two-for-one. And I gotta get used to saying an enter ability instead of an enters the battlefield effect. It always feels so weird. I like Razor Tide Bridge here. I also like the Visionary Augmenter. Get a couple servos, use those servos to improvise or have a wide board for our on the job. You know, yeah, Augmenter is actually sweet enough to take over the on color duel. Mandible Justicier is fantastic here. Lifelinker that's going to attack pretty consistently as at least like a 3-2 lifelink, which is ridiculous for only 2 mana. Plays really well with the Augmenter, that's 2 artifacts hitting the board in one turn. Bone Splitter for our Chrome Courier, or our Justicier, or our Tokens. Yeah, I kind of like Bone Splitter. Looks better than, like, on the job in this deck. Wrestler for an instant speed artifact to enter the battlefield. Trigger just this year. Puzzle Knot's pretty good at improvising, though, so that was a decent option, too. Ooh. We find any splashable black card. We have two black dual lands already. Bake into a pie is sadly not splashable. It requires double black instead of a single black. So we're just on a hard evidence or a glint sleeve artisan. I'm going to go for the evidence. Another Justicier. Or Rebuke. These are both great. I might have to take Rebuke over Justicier to make Gear Hulk better because we're on Disenchant and Rebuke as the only instance in the deck. Two total. Yeah, I gotta take Rebuke then. By Glass Siren, we can improvise with our map token or use it for decent value while getting a real cheap flyer. Looks great. Um, you can improvise with the Power Stones and they help play the Gear Hulk. It's pretty cute. Instant speed power stone to trigger Eye of Malkator is out of nowhere. Skull Bomb's also decent though for this archetype. 
But this is also another instant. So we'll have an instant engrave a little more often. Pick five. Oaken Siren to help get to the Gear Hulk faster. And just artifacts in general. Like that a little more than a third hard evidence. Mm, Reality Heist could be big card draw, especially if we recast it off Gear Hulk. That'd be cute too. You know what? Sure. Reality Heist is like the cutest with Gear Hulk. Then a mobilizer. Oh, I gotta take Chrome Courier over that though, right? The two for one value of this card is just absurd. Yeah. A mobilizer is good, but just four taps total. We only have one proliferator in the deck. Yeah, we're not the craziest immobilizer deck. Pick seven. Arcbound prototype looks great. Plenty of artifact creatures, so this trades off and keeps those two plus one plus one counters on your board. Just puts them somewhere else. If we're really lucky, moving those plus one plus one counters onto a hanger back walker is hilarious. Do I have any mirror in this deck? Nope. So the kinsmith sucks. Take a Sky Swimmer Koi that I think is getting cut here. Yep, I like every other card in the deck better than that. That would be our 24th playable. Um, With the Improvise stuff and the, keep, the cheap card draw from Hard Evidences, Spyglass Siren as well, we can probably do just 16 lands here, so I can actually play this Artisan. Go 16 lands. Do I care about artifacts enough to play these bridges? Even though they aren't on color at all? I don't think so. They're just to trigger Eye of Malkator and Mandible just this year. I think I already have plenty of ways to trigger all those. Pretty much every creature in the deck will trigger them. So I'm just going to get rid of the bridges. I guess they make the Reality Heist cheaper as well, but it should be more than cheap enough, generically. Okay, one cut. Because I'm going to cut a land and then one more card. I guess I'll ditch the Skull Bomb. like all the creatures a lot. I want to keep all the instants in the deck. And I'm pretty low on removal, so a permanent removal spell like Exile from Wanderer's Strike does feel big, even if we're not proliferating basically ever. Yeah. Alright. Yeah, we're all wrapped up here. We will call it a deck here. Hop right into the gameplay. All right, here we are for game one on the play. We've got the Arcbound Prototype Hangerback Walker combo, which is hilarious, but probably not going to happen. I doubt they're going to kill this with the walker on board. But we can hope. We can dream. Oh my god, we've got Aya Malkator. This is going to be an aggressive start anyway. Feels like we're playing blue-white in uh, Phyrexia All Will Be One draft. Turn two just this year, turn three Eye of Malkator. Played that exact same curve many times before. Find Rebuke Augmenter. These are both fantastic draws. We just need the lands for them. I'm going to keep them. We play Prototype Hold Up Rebuke next turn. And then we play Wrestler and Walker probably. That was a very cute sound effect. Go team, go! Get in there, eyeball. They are over it, okay. We take those. We are 1-0, heading into game number two. Alright, here we are on the play for game two. Open out crabs for fun. 
But we can start beating down with our Glint Sleeve Artisan and a Servo. If you've seen my first draft of the format on this return trip, you know how threatening a Vault Scourge can actually be. There's a lot of... A lot of ways that gets dangerous just by putting a single equipment on it. So I'm just going to rebuke that. And we are at serious risk of flooding right now. Ooh, narrowly dodged. Let's go. Let's see how many artifacts they play next turn if they're just this year. There's a one. Dang. If they only played one, I could still just throw the Augmenter in front of just this here, which would be great. But I can still throw uh, three quarters of the card in front of it. And I'm up one fourth of a card. No! Get me out of here. That's not horrible. Mir's just going to kill both my Tobins. It's going to kill a Servo and the Artisan. That's yeah, kind of rough. Guess I just do it this way then. Since this does 2 damage when it dies anyway. Just trade into a 2-2 two -two with this. And then the Mir trades into the two one ones. Oh. That's a super good trade for me. I got the mirror to kill just one of my creatures instead of two of them. I will take that. God, I can just put this on the crab. The crab is not a defender. I should have just put it on that crab and attacked with both. I completely blanked on that. That's so evil. We'll give him the holy cow. Oh no. Stick him up. This is going to get real bad if that Halberd ends up on the Song Shaper. It didn't, so I'm just going to kill that before it gets First Strike Trampled. Okay, that's a beautiful, beautiful draw. Getting a lot of mileage out of these tokens. Thanks to the Bone Splitter, really, making them all threats. Bardish! It's only three toughness, so we can still send three ones into that. And First Strike Trample continues to ruin my day. Hello? These are all legit draws. Nice. Oh my god, another flyer's coming up. That's going to be sick. I've got a 
two three crab ready to defend against the two two if they don't throw a bardish on it. No. So much for blocks. Voltage surge the flyer. Poke me for four. No blocks. Crab is not attacking into a 4-3, so we move the Bone Splitter to the cohort. Drop the Cloud Guard and move the Bone Splitter to... Crab, probably. I think it really matters on blocks because of the first strike. has first strike at all times that's so bad for me they're dead to two flying hits though so we're just on that plan they have to top deck something to deal with the flyer or they're dead okay mountain off the top flyers in its game the angry cake has arrived the gg from opponent Right, the curve here for game three. Siren into prototype into Glint Sleeve Artisan. We got flyers and robots and artificers. Probably actually want to use the map token on the prototype so that it's bigger and then when it dies, it moves all those counters to the servo. It'd be pretty cool. Oh, they've got a one drop too. Three bit inspector it is. Our first draw is a land number five, which is sketchy. Another game we could flood out. Worked out well last time. Green, white from our opponent, one of the scariest aggressive archetypes. It has some of the most explosive draws. If you get the plus one plus one counter shenanigans, they can just have a million power on board. Ridiculously early. Just gonna make sure to have another artifact creature on board for the prototype. Or fire of suffering with the expendable little food and stuff. Or... Apologies, my water bottle is making explosion noises. Well, these are not the draws we're looking for. Do I still make this a 3 3 to attack into these? I think I still try to make this a 3-3 three, three rather than making that a 2-2. Two, two. Nice. We succeeded. Bloom Hulk with the Glorifier, that's huge blocks, and now the prototype is not a good attacker anymore. Take my five, and see what Chrome Courier finds us. Hanger Back Walker, I mean, that's for sure the pick, right? Now they just cannot block prototype. They also can't attack into it. I've got expendable chumpers though, and I'm at eight. 
So I'm just going to send it in. Oh, if they have exile removal, I'll be pretty sad, but it's kind of their one out here. No. No! Well, that's bad. There's no just like sad face I have. That's a big, bold attack. Two, three, four, five on the crackback. We have their life total. They're down to six. Sure, I'm going to do that. There's some draws in her deck that could win the race off of this crackback. Wanderer's Strike, I don't think, is quite one of those draws. I did two plus one plus one counters here, but we'll see. I don't really have much of a choice this flooded out than to hope to end the game now, because we have nothing else to cast. One damage from dead. Go to one it is. We've got some lethal draws. Stern Lesson can help find them. <laughs> That's actual comedy for Marina. And I'm just dead on board because I have to block every single creature. So I just get trampled over by Revolutionary. God. Yeah. Oh, they have the Captured by Legax off the top as well. If they had that in hand, they would have played it last turn. It would have been lethal. Great card is great. And bad draws are bad. We are 2-1 and one, heading into game 4. All right, here we are on the play. This is our first Gear Hulk draw for game four here. It's going to be pretty sweet. I do need to hit land four on curve, and I'm trying to get all the way up to six, so never mind. I was going to say I'm going to surveil any non-lands into the graveyard off this map, but now I've hit land four, so I'm guaranteed to go Eye of Malkator Augmenter here. All right, sure. Still get the scry two next turn into the augmenter. Now that I have five lands, I'm really just looking for an instant of some kind. Well, those are options. I probably actually go for disenchant because then even if they don't do anything, I can disenchant something when I play the gear hulk. That feels right. And I need to draw into line six, so I'll scry the other card to the bottom. Because we're going to tap out for Augmenter, then we'll play Disenchant turn five, then we'll play Gear Hulk turn six. That of Rebirth doesn't do anything to like four counters on it. So, if nothing else, I just blow that up with the second disenchant. We kill the Song Shaper first. Okay, or the Vault Scourge. So I can just trade my 2 1 into the Song Shaper. Nope, they're going to try to go for a big Junkyard Genius play.
Most of it's good enough. Save the Eye of Malkator. that for the third counter on the vats. Lifelink in for two. Talic Rebuke. Dang it. That not being land six is astronomical here because now they might actually get to use the vat. They can sack an artifact during the end step here and then vat something back. I guess they have nothing really that good to pick up with the vat right now though. Yeah, I guess that's an option too. Let the genius die and then pick the genius up with the vat is the play. Yeah, maybe it was just don't attack. It's awkward. They're going to immediately sack it again just for one more damage? Alright. Saving us from bigger genius triggers later. I probably should have just main phased this gear hulk so I could hit them for four with the eye. But now I'm holding up rebuke. I guess that's something. I can also have an infinitely larger blocker than they expected here. I guess they could sack the Vat of Rebirth in response to me Gear Hulk disenchanting it. But the genius wouldn't get the menace anyway. Yeah. Only the Vault Scourge would get Menace. So we'd still have just the gigantic blockers on the Genius. Save all the mana up. Am I about to be real sad about not holding up Rebuke? Let's find out. Not really, no. Yeah, we're doing great. Rebuke costs... Oh, it costs a blue. Alright. I was going to say Rebuke costs... A low enough amount that I can reality heist here. Because I can improvise by holding a servo back, but no, I need triple blue to do that. I feel miles ahead right now. Our opponent seems to just be flooding a little bit. Ooh, courier into courier is always gross. And I can still improvise the rebuke for one mana off of two summoning sick couriers. Bone splitter. God, those were insane draws. And then I get to rebuke the bacon to a pie to keep the gear hulk, and they are so over this nonsense. We are three and one off of the back of our first drawn torrential gear hulk. Right, we're on the play for game five now. Solid start. 
I think I'm just going to jam a 3-2 Cogwork Wrestler early here. Just play and equip Bone Splitter together in the same turn. It's kind of phony. I do really need to top deck a land in our first two draw steps. We failed on the first, but if we find on the second, the Eye of Malkator scries towards the mana we need to get to the Gear Hulk. And Reality, Hash, Reality Heist should be a little cheaper than Gear Hulk. All right, we did hit land three. They can't have a rebuke up here because it costs three mana. They have no artifacts to improvise. I mean, they can improvise with Mist Vault Bridge technically, but the same as tapping it for mana. They're going to cast down our three, two. I'm not going to rebuke that. Land, land. We keep those, right? Island Holder Rebuke next turn, Land Reality Heist next turn, Gear Hulk Reality Heist. Yep. That's a plan. Our Eye of Malkator is going to sit here and be very sad, though. Blood Fountain. That is really good with Metallic Rebuke. Two artifacts for the Improvise. So great with Improvise and Affinity and all that. But they need to just sack the blood immediately to dig and find a swamp. Aomender picks up a blood fountain? Sure. I'm gonna cast Reality Heist while they can't rebuke it. Well, should I? No, because if I top deck the land for Gear Hulk, it's so much better to get them to spend rebuke on Reality Heist than the Gear Hulk itself. And Reality Heist doesn't help find the land because it only finds artifacts. So we have them rebuke this, top deck a basic, play it, play Gear Hulk while they're tapped out. Oof, rough draw. One artifact. Sadness. Hmm. If they had rebuke, would they have to rebuke the heist? No, because it's draw two maximum. It's not that scary of a play. Don't think we just jam out Gear Hulk expecting no rebuke. Because we've got a perfectly reasonable line here just getting a bunch of damage in. Or forcing a chump block, that works as well. Okay, they are tapped out of their rebuke, so I can just rebuke this thing because it's going to be gigantic, and then I can gear Hulk while they're tapped out. And that is the strat. We're going to be a ton of damage. We hit for eight here. Get a couple chrome couriers to refuel. And to keep triggering Eye of Malkator every turn. This looks phenomenal. All right, they have baked our Gear Hulk into a pie. That's going to be a disgusting pie. Be really hard to eat that thing. But to each their own. They still take eight this turn. 
This is gonna be gross. Find a cohort. I guess cohort going to the grave actually just kills them. Hold up. It's lethal on board. And there's the concession. All right. Nasty game. We are now four and one. At least breaking even out of the draft. Super solid record. See if we can't keep it up heading into game number six. All right, game number six. Prototype. Chrome Courier. Or cheap reverse engineer. Yeah, this is definitely a keep. Playing against black white for now. Bartholome del Presidio. So they can sack creatures and artifacts to make that gigantic. If it gets too big, I have my Wanderer's Strike now. More blue sources, probably. Yeah. This looks pretty fine. It's going to force them to use removal on the Chrome Courier now. And no removal for it yet. Untethered Express is scary. 4 4 Trampler that gets bigger every time it attacks. So the first time it attacks, it's already a 5 5 Trample. It's so awkward, but I've got a Wanderer Strike in hand, so I'm actually just gonna lean into the Proliferate mechanic here. Arcanist's Owl. It's a flying blocker and they draw a card. They failed to find. They did not get to draw the card. Wanderer's Strike. The Owl. Now I have two 4-4s. Four they can crew the Untethered Express in response, so I don't attack with the 4-4 four four on the ground, but it still feels pretty good. They might be under enough life total pressure that just a 5-6 is worth it. Oh, tempting apple Bartholome? Disgusting. Which one of us took my courier and flushed it down the toilet? Devastating. Genuinely devastating. Alright, well. Try to rebuke something and then gear hulk the rebuke. At this point... Now they just, if they don't have anything left in hand, they just crew the express and get in. I guess if they do that, then we just play a 5-6 at instant speed and eat it without losing a card. That's also a 2 for 1, so that's also fine. Or I just attack with Artisan. They don't have enough artifacts to sack the Bartholome. So it trades into the express, or... Um, just gets in. No, I don't think I attack here. Sorry for all those squeaky chair sounds. I'm jiggling, I'm nervous. Okay, Rebuke is not affordable. And now Bartolme is getting insane. That's not good. Alright, we're gonna eat their... their train.
Yep. Cool. Train has been devoured. Turn less and hold up rebuke feels better than just reverse engineer. Find Eye of Malkator. Would I still hold up rebuke for that? No, because the Power Stone hits tapped. I guess if I don't attack with Gear Hulk, I'm holding up rebuke. So Artisan would trade into Witch and Apple here. They'd have to sack both to make this five toughness on blocks. I think we send the team. Although, wait, no, then do they kill us on the crackback? Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. No, they don't kill us on the crackback. Unless they have a cheap enough spell I'm not thinking of. Do I have to hold up Rebuke? I'm at 16. The only thing that would kill me is if they have like another Tempting Apple or something. And if they have that, they could just play a basic land and then play it and I still die. Rebuke wouldn't even counter it. I'm going to play the Eye of Malkator. Set up the draws and make next turn lethal more likely. Find the Siren, probably. Triggers the Eye of Malkator and puts a counter on board. Gives me a flying blocker. Confector's kind of nuts right now. With all their food nonsense going on. Yeah, the life gain's just through the roof here. Ah, I could have lethal if we could get that confectioner out of the way. But we cannot. I can deal nine. They mill the Justicier and then draw off of Reverse Engineer. That would be trying to find a one-mana way to get Confectioner out of the way, which just doesn't exist. Trump take nine. Trump... Take one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Holding up rebuke. This is our plan. Just gotta pray that rebuke is enough to not die here. Keep the Siren on board to trump Bartolome. Sweet Tooth Witch might be lethal. Two more permanents for Bartolome. I guess I forced him to pay the three here just to tax them off of throwing the food at me. Like throwing Tempting Apple at me. That keeps them off the mana to eat the food to gain life as well, which would make them dead to Spyglass Siren if they tap out. Because then I take 8 on board. No, I would still take lethal on board. I have to chump with the Siren either way. Because Bartolome threatens to make it 9 damage. Yeah, Rebuke, even though it's not going to actually counter the Witch, taxes enough mana here to matter a lot. Yep. If I let it in, I die. So I've got a block there. GG from opponent? Do they have the extra two? 
they do not have the extra two. Oh, that was close. Whew. That is five and one now in the money in this draft. All right, a bit of a slower hand here, not starting till turn three, but a lot of good cards in it. Mainly just a ton of card draw. Playing against blue red, turn two, Captain Storm. All right. It's going to be big damage quick against a very slow hand. Plus one, plus one counter for every artifact they play. And that's two artifacts off one spell and an incredible rare in this format. It's a two for one no matter what, but especially if they get to start sacking artifacts to it, it's a massive card draw engine. Just sacking artifact tokens to draw another card every turn. Need to Chrome Courier into mana here, but I'm pretty sure I'm just dead to this Wombo Combo start from our opponent. Because even if we hit all our lands up the curve, most of our spells are just card draw. I need to play Cloud Guard for as many blockers as possible next turn. Oh boy. Alright. Magical Christmas Land has occurred. This looks unwinnable. Captain Storm into Bray's Apprentice was already one of the most explosive starts I've ever seen, and they followed up with the very cheap 4-mana 5-6 that can give itself unblockable, thanks to the affinity ability. There's the Siren to go with Captain Storm. And the removal of Cloud Guard. Alright, we're moving on. This has to be literally one of the best hands their deck can even draw. That's insane. Really, really good deck from our opponent, but also had to be like a top tier hand for that deck. That was ridiculous. Five and two heading into game number eight. All right, this hand's a little quicker. We have a Cogwork Wrestler if we need to slam that down on the defensive. But we've still got some good card draw thanks to the Chrome Courier and a super wide board with Cloud Guard and Cohort. Ooh, second Chrome Courier. Probably just saving this as a dorky trick for later. Okay, it's courier time. Grab the hard evidence, I'm already good on mana. Contagious Vorak, 3-3 three, three plus a draw, a land. Alright, cohort, cohort is way better on blocks here. It's going to make their attacks really bad, because we can trade off into the Vorak with something that can unearth. Your Switch Stalker. Okay, I have Malkator Cogwork Wrestler could be pretty nasty. Um... Or just surprise blocks eating the Witch Stalker. I think I just want to get more damage out first, but I like that as a future play. Let's just get as much uh, flying damage ready to go as possible here. And then we make our really defensive lines like I have Malkator Wrestler. Knight of the Sweets Revenge. Gives them a ton of mana, and it can buff the whole board. Follow Scavenger is the play. And, ooh, and a one mana Annihilating Glare. To kill our flyer. We are very far on the back foot. We're going to need to soak infinite mana in this hanger back walker to get back in here. Yeah, let's, let's scry and set up the cogwork rest of their surprise. Siren's fine. I need more flying threats for sure.
Although they've got a lot of food to eat. Briarbridge Tracker is spectacular. Three mana, four, three vigilance, and you draw a card off its glue token. All you need is to control a token to maintain that 4-3 Vigilance stat line, which is super easy in this format. Alright, show me your trick. Or I will have a very good block here. Crack the clue, dig for something. They do have a fatal push for the Eye of Malkator. Gross. Am I actually going to use the Siren's Map token on Hanger Backwalker, maybe? That could be a thing. Could actually be a plan. We hang her back walker for two and play Siren this turn. Oh, that's a cleanup crew. Just pop it immediately before it gets any bigger. At least I still get the two Thopters out of it, but that stops all the shenanigans I wanted to do. Four damage in the sky every turn. I'd say it's a four turn clock, but they're a food deck, so it's going to take way longer than that. Probably want to get rid of the Trampler before they crack the Night of Sweets Revenge. I'll be ready to chump with a million one months here. But they're out of trample damage now. Well, a revealed gear hulk's way worse than an unrevealed one. And I've drawn no instance this game. Rough. Need to cohort so I have another one one. They can just block with the cleanup crew. It's better to crack a clue in a map then. I guess. There's an instant for the Gear Hulk. So shove that in Grave and then Gear Hulk does do something when we play it. But we're playing Gear Hulk next turn. Okay, I need one, two, three, four, five chumpers. One, two, three, four. I have only four trumpers here, but I'm at six, 16. I can let like one thing through. It would deal six, and then the witch can just throw all the food at us for two damage a piece. Oh my god, we're so dead. Everything's just a chump though, so. Yeah. It's not like holding the 2 2 back is going to make any of our blocks good. They can just crack Knight of Sweets Revenge, send everybody in, start flinging food. Yep, here they go.
one gear hulk as a blocker. Their creatures are just straight beef already. Ten life, but I'm essentially at four because they can throw all those for two damage apiece. Four life, I can only let one creature through. I need at least four blockers up. I think Cohort might be better than Gear Hulk here. Get a little harder, send a bigger message. There's my four chumpers. We are dead to removal. Or another food producer. A little too late, Wanderer Strike. I don't think we have anything for two mana that's going to do it for us, but let's see what Stern Lesson finds. Those definitely don't do it for us. Five and three it is, I think. Don't remember the exact record, but that sounds right to me. Real solid record still. And the money for sure. And these two of our losing games were against very, very good decks. Those last two for sure. The second loss was the most unwinnable game I've had in weeks. Five and three indeed. Just at the um in the money point. We're up 100 gems, and we got four packs for free. Not a bad draft at all. And we get a nice variety of packs out of these remix drafts. Two packs of Brothers War, one of Phyrexia All Will Be One, and one of March Machine today. But that is going to end today's video. As always, I'd like to thank my patrons and YouTube members for their support, as well as you for watching the video. If you enjoyed it and you're interested in seeing some more, you can always like, comment, and subscribe to tell the YouTube algorithm to send you some more under recommended feed. If you'd like to catch me live, you can check out the Twitch channel in the link in the description below. If you'd like to support the channel directly, you can check out the Patreon link in the description below. But other than that, as always, thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you again soon for some more Magic Arena.